All right, guys, I'm back with another video. So I added a uh, proper uh, skeletal mesh support. So I'll just go ahead and go over that with you first. If we come over here to the act, well, it's still called AD. I'm going to have to rename that, I guess. It should be called ID for item data uh, because I renamed that from action data to item data. But you'll see that these are still labeled AD uh, right there. So just ignore that. Uh, this is the animation blueprint. It's stored as a soft reference. It's not a big deal. Animation blueprints are fairly small. Uh, they're normally only a couple of kilobytes. But anyway, this will be disabled by default. It's only for testing purposes to demonstrate that it actually works. All it's doing is rotating it using a sine wave. Uh, and so you can see it's actually working even with it holstered. When I simulate physics, because I'm not, this isn't a physical animation and I'm a get, not giving weight to the actual animation uh, during physics, uh, it doesn't uh, actually animate whenever uh, physics is simulated. So you'll see that it does work, uh, and that's a skeletal mesh. Uh, so that'll be uh, how the rifle will be treated for now. The pistol will still be a static mesh by default. Um, ignore that. I don't know why I added that. I was having a moment, I guess. Um, So anyway, back here on the held objects master, and yeah, you'll see that uh, these are still called action data or AD, even though I renamed them to item data. So just yeah, ignore that. Um, so there's only a few changes that I made over here in order to add support for that. It was very basic, but some people were getting confused by it. If we go over to the setup mesh function, you'll see whenever we add the skeletal mesh component, we just call this, and this will async load. Uh, it'll get the anim, the anim instance soft class reference. It'll load it. Like I said, it's only a couple kilobytes. It's not going to be expensive. Um, and then after that, it just assigns it to the skeletal mesh, assuming that it's a skeletal mesh, which it should be. So over here, I just had to enable query and physics uh, for collision. And then I added this in order to get the skeletal mesh uh, to be properly supported. Uh, this doesn't cause any issues with static meshes. It'll still work the same way. Um, but yeah. So on the character blueprint, you'll notice that I, t I got rid of the uh, pickup manager and I, I migrated all that stuff over to the slot manager and that allowed me to reduce everything down to this. So in actuality, this is kind of redundant. I could have just called this uh, event dispatcher from uh, here instead of calling uh, these two separate ones. I could have actually just called this uh, hand state change instead of the occupy hand, but anyway, it's not that big of a deal and it's not gonna cause any extra overhead. Uh, but it it will actually help you know exactly where this is being called from in case there are any bugs or problems. So I'm just gonna leave it there like that for now. So, yeah. So you'll notice that I removed a lot of stuff uh, from here. Now I did add, okay, it looks like I have a typo here in this comment, uh, but I did add these blueprint interface functions that I wouldn't have to cast this uh, to the character blueprint class. And I did that because some people are inevitably going to want to uh, retarget this stuff and copy, make duplicates of this. And if this is cast into this character class, then they'll have to go in there and they'll have to change that. Uh, yeah, so it's just better if I use a blueprint interface to call these functions uh, from this instead of doing a cast. So that's the reason why I did that. Uh, that basically, oh, well, not really. So 
I actually changed the way, let me just go ahead and open up this in a new tab. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah, so let me go back to the event graph. I'm a little lost here. I forgot where I put that. Yeah, sorry, I've had a uh, migraine all day, so I'm kind of like zoning out here. Oh, state updates, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, so yeah, this is how things are being uh, replicated now. It's only executing on the server. We don't need uh, to multicast this to all the clients because uh, this is a struct, so we can just simply replicate it right here. Uh, so I'm just having the server do all this stuff. Uh, so that will reduce server traffic, uh, which is good for replication. So other than that, I did make uh, some, I did simplify uh, the way that I'm doing this here. As you can see, yeah. So that'll reduce the overhead of the distance-based aim offset uh, ever so slightly. I removed a bunch of stuff uh, from here that was no longer being used. That hack that I had in here, uh, I removed that because it's kind of irrelevant. And I've done a video on it in the past anyway, so now you'll see that there's only uh, a handful of functions in here. This should make it a, a lot less intimidating for you guys and a lot easier for you to understand and extend. And if you want to remove this stuff right here, you can easily remove it now but it's there to serve as an example. Um, let me see. Yeah, so this was fixed. Yeah, so I fixed uh, that bug right there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so that bug is fixed now. Um, and this is fixed as well. So this is replicated properly now. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, so I did actually show that, but I never actually, uh, yeah. So basically it's just uh, having this executed on the server. So is locally controlled. So if this is locally controlled, then uh, the client will, will do all of this, it'll calculate it, and then it'll just send that over to the server. And the reason why I'm doing it that way, uh, why I'm trusting the client with that information is because by default, you'll always have to trust the client as to where they're aiming. There's no way for you to verify that. I can't verify where somebody is actually aiming on their screen uh, without actually replicating their mouse movement uh, and that's going to create latency uh, for the client. So that's not normally something that's that important. Uh, it doesn't actually serve much of a purpose if somebody exploits that uh, because it's just where they're looking. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, basically that's that's all the uh, the changes that I made. And so I'm going to be taking some time off uh, from further updates. Uh, so that I can uh, do, so I'm going to get back to doing videos. I'm going to be doing some videos on uh, how to do, how to create and set up interactions, uh, item interactions between the player and items like shelves, drawers, stuff like that, items in the environment. And I'm going to show you how to do that using contextual anim animations. Uh, and yeah, anyway, I'll see you in the next video.